It's time to cowboy up at Lucas Oil Speedway for the Dixie Chopper. Feel the thunder in Wheatland. That'll get your bud, blood pumping right there. Tim McCready grabs the lead from Brandon Shepard. McCready in the Mega Plumbing number 39 out front. Little topsy-turvy down in three and four. And this is not a championship points night, but it sets the field for the top 18 for Saturday night. As they go down the back straightaway, McCready will lead Shepard. Again, McCready started inside row two. Brandon Shepard second. Good run for Scott Quigler right now. He'll run third with three in the books. Shepard trying to use that low line to see if it comes in. It's a shorter way around this racetrack, but McCready looking good on the top so far. Scott Krigler still back in third. Bobby Pierce in fourth, and Ryan Gustin in fifth. Bobby Pierce is running low down there a little bit now. He'll bump the cushion out of four. McCready still leads Shepard. Three-tenths of a second. B. Shep on the bottom. McCready problems at turn one, Bob. B. Shep doesn't have the steam coming off the corner, though, in that B5. McCready able to hold it, at least for now. McCready never say die on the outside. He's holding on to that outside groove. He's got that Midwest sheet metal bright orange spoiler. That means he is the point leader of the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, and he's battling with one of the best in the business. Brandon Shepard, the defending Silver Dollar Nationals champion and four-time Dirt Track World champion. There's the battle back there. Bobby Pierce has cleared Scott Krigler. So BP32, uh, who picked him? You did. Oh, he's running third right now, Bob. <laughs> we still got a long way to go, though. We still got 39 to go. Good brace there. Scott Krigler's running a good show, and here comes Gustin. Gustin goes to the inside of Scott Krigler. Can't muster up enough steam coming off the corner. Can't get by just yet, but Gustin looks pretty good here tonight. Still holding on to the fifth spot. The second place point man in the series in the 71, Hudson O'Neill is just outside. Oil Speedway, Tim McCready is your leader. Brandon Shepard and Bobby Pierce, second and third. Three of the top dirt late model drivers in America bringing it back to the green. McCready, Shepard, Pierce in the one. Bobby Pierce working the outside. McCready still leads, but a good battle up front. Gustin now to fourth. Three and four wide down in turns one and two. Great view from our Lucas Oil Chopper. McCready, the leader, but the battle for second. Can we say it, James? Can we say it? Not yet. Not yet. Hold Not on. Yet. We Bobby got a Pierce ways to go. trying to get second. <laughs> He's going to make a move on the outside. He has got a good car, good run. Dominated at Tri-City on Tuesday night. He'll go to second. Just eight-tenths of a second behind McCready. And Bobby running the bottom out of two there in 32. He'll drift up there. Former Show Me 100 winner. And now Shepard has come back. And Ryan Gustin and Hudson O'Neill closing. Top five looking good out of turn four, Bob. O'Neill underneath Gustin trying to get another spot. That's a battle for fourth. But Shepard's there as well. He's faded just a little bit. And now Gustin looks underneath Brandon Shepard for third. Ryan Gustin, a former winner here on the Lucas Oil MLRA. Battle for the lead. Pierce took a shot. Meanwhile, they're side by side for third between Shepard and Gustin. And here comes the Reaper in 19R. Gustin in the 19. Will he be able to keep that spot? Brandon Shepard not giving up on the outside. He was the low feeder early on in this race, and now he's on the top side where we normally see him. Shepard trying to hold on and find something that can motivate him to get back to the top two guys. Bobby Pierce has not cut much into the lead of Tim McCready, a seven-tenths of a second, but a dandy here between Shepard and Gustin. Hudson O'Neill fifth, and it's Krigler, Bloomquist, Heckin-Ass Richard, Shannon Babb runs in fifth. Billy Moyer Jr. up to 11th, Bob. He started back in uh, row seven. Hudson O'Neill so close to the back end of that 19 car going into the corner. O'Neill, what a good run for him so far this year, two victories. Scott Bloomquist hasn't won in a while. He had one win last year. And there is Scott Bloomquist, the six-time Show Me 100 winner. Bloomquist currently running in seventh. O'Neill makes the pass. Hud will go to fourth around Ryan Gustin. One caution so far as we work lap 15. McCready, nine-tenths of a second, the leader over Bobby Pierce. 
Frank Heckenass Jr. gets by Scott Bloomquist in the 99. So Heckenass trying to pick off another spot. Krigler looks like it'll be the 12 as the next victim possibly for Frank Heckenass Jr. Right now that last scored lap, the fastest car on the track was the 71 of Hudson O'Neill trying to make up time and he's closed on Brandon Shepard. Meanwhile, you see the battle back here. Bloomquist and Richards, two former Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series National Champions. That's the battle for eighth and ninth. FHJ, Frank Hickenass Jr. looking good in seventh. Here comes Jimmy Owens. He's up to 14th, Bob. And he is the line X biggest mover of the race up those eight spots. So Jimmy Owens, who had to transfer into this main event out of a B main tonight, making his way through the field. Owens and that Ramirez Motorsports rocket back up front though it's a Longhorn the house car for Tim McCready in the lead leading the Pierce Platinum right now in about uh, five or six more laps are going to pick up the traffic as long as it stays green Brandon Shepard that's an O'Neill bouncing through turn four <laughs> good race there between the two youngsters, Brandon Shepard and Hudson O'Neill, and they're trying to climb because they're going to be moving into traffic at a couple of more laps, Bob. The top four, it's going to get very interesting. Hudson O'Neill stuck it to the inside of Brandon Shepard and then just lost the nose, couldn't turn that race car. But right now, it's the 20-year-old Hudson O'Neill battling with the 28-year-old Brandon Shepard, and Shepard able to hold him off. Shepard led the field to the green flag here tonight in the Cowboy Classic. Well, you mentioned, Dave mentioned about tire conservation. Bobby Pierce, he lets it all hang out every lap. But right now, he's moving, still back on the bottom. But in three and four, he goes to the top. There's the battle, Hudson O'Neill, B. Shep, side by side, down the back straightaway. Nice race. That Lazy Days RV machine is looking good. He's moved to Tennessee, and it has paid off this year. Second in points. Will he pull off the move? Yes, he gets it. Cuts down in front of Brandon Shepard. Close call right there for Hudson. There's the battle now as they close behind Brian Shirley. It's down to seven tenths of a second. McCready down low, Bobby Pierce down. He'll go behind fellow Illini driver Brian Shirley. It's getting a little slippery, Bob. 23 in the books. Getting a little slippery, and usually that's where Bobby Pierce shines. He goes to the bottom, almost pulls even, pulls right behind Tim McCready, T-Mac, and the smooth operator battling for the lead here at Wheatland. Let's see the lead right now. It's three-tenths of a second. McCready, Pierce, O'Neill, third. Shepard, Gustin, fifth. Heck and ask, how about Scott Krigler? Shout out to him, seventh. Bloomquist, Richard, Stormy Scott, now tenth. Just past the halfway point in this one. Pierce trying to find a mistake out of the 39 of T-Mac. But T-Mac keeping it on the inside right now as this track changes throughout its 45 laps. By the way, Brian Shirley unlapped himself. Only one car out of the race. It's Earl Pearson Jr. So 23 of the 24 starters. Davenport trying 17. to move up through there. 17 for Jonathan Davenport. 12 wins so far this year for the driver from Blairsville, Georgia, the three-time series champion, third in points. Fergie kind of loses some grip off the corner, and BMJ, Billy Moyer Jr., moves by, and now Davenport trying to move by the 22 out of Mount Holly, North Carolina. Last time around, eight-tenths of a second, McCready over Pierce. You see a good battle there between three drivers, Ferguson, Davenport, Moyer Jr., three wide out of four. But right now, we work lap 28, Bob. There's 17 to go in the Cowboy Classic. Every position matters because between the Cowboy Classic and the tribute to Don and Billy Gibson, the two prelim nights for the Show Me 100, you collect your points for where you finish. The top 18 points drivers will lock into Saturday's show for the Lucas Oil Show Me 100. Right now, Tim McCready. Ooh, right look there's at the this, battle there. This. Here comes Hudson O'Neill, Bobby Pierce. McCready's led every lap, Bob, and right now they work through traffic. And here comes Pearson O'Neill and Brandon Shepard in fourth, Gust in fifth. McCready still leads us up to 1.2 seconds, the advantage. That was a brave move for Bobby Pierce. 15 to go in this one. We keep our eyes glued on this battle for second. <laughs> Bobby Pierce has not been able to close in on Tim McCready. Now 1.2 second, the advantage for McCready over Pierce. But here comes Hudson O'Neill. O'Neill on the inside battle for second. Mike Marler involved in this one. Look at Pierce go to the top side. Can he get the momentum coming off the corner? No. Wow. Good battle. Good race. 
Critty's up to 1.4 seconds as he this battle behind him is a dandy between Hudson O'Neill and Bobby Pierce. Now Hudson O'Neill started in sixth. Bob, he's still got 13 laps to get to the lead. By the way, our picks between the three of us, yes, sir. one, two, and three on the racetrack. McCready, Hudson O'Neill, and Bobby Pierce. Brandon Shepard still lurking in fourth with Ryan Gustin in fifth. Who needs three months off from picking? We're not rusty. We're looking good tonight. Hudson O'Neill trying to get his second or third win of the year in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Pierce right there as they're behind lap traffic. There is Josh Richards running in seventh, the iRacing.com, number 14 for Clint Boyer, the NASCAR star, now turned TV commentator. Josh Richards, one of the best in dirt late model racing, the 2017 Lucas Oil champion. Ten to go in this one now for McCready. Can he hold on? Will there be another caution in the final ten laps of this race? That's what Hudson O'Neill is wanting for sure. I think four out of the last five Lucas Oil main events have come down to five or less laps to go, and we've had a lead change. By the way, Jimmy Owens up 22nd to 9th. Bloomquist is 10th. McCready still leads, but it's 2.4 seconds. Hudson O'Neill's got to pick it up because there's nine to go. Hudson O'Neill has a little bit of a green track in front of him or clean track in front of him right now. Can he use, utilize that to close the door on McCready, who's going to be in some slower traffic? There's the gap between second and third. Bobby Pierce in the 32 in that spot. Bobby's coming on. 71 has cut it down to 1.5 seconds. There's Pierce. But right now, McCready has gotten around Marler and then working on the inside as they go into turn number three. There's Brandon Shepard. He's fourth, Gustin fifth. Ryan Gustin has had a good run. Look at Shepard struggling to get that car pointed to the inside of Billy Moyer Jr. There's the 19. There is Ryan Gustin. By the way, right behind him is Frank Heckenass Jr. in the 99. So Heckenass having a very good showing here in the Cowboy Classic. Grady stretches it out a little bit, 1.8 seconds. As we've got five to go, it's down to 1.7. Pierce still third, Shepard, Gustin, Heckenass, Richards, Owen, Stormy, Scott, Bloomquist still 10th. Josh Richards back in seventh. That line X biggest mover of the race is Jimmy Owens, now up 14 spots to eighth. Four to go. Tim McCready looking for his second series win of the year. Again, it's a non-championship points paying race, but it does count in the all-time win list. See, he heads down the main straightaway, Bob. Three laps remaining. The lead is 1.6 seconds over Hudson O'Neill. McCready ever so gentle with that throttle coming off the corner. On the opposite side of the spectrum is Hudson O'Neill, just charging for all it's worth right now with two laps to go. He's running out of time. Only one caution, that was back on lap seven. He has led every lap so far tonight. He was challenged earlier by Brandon Shepard and Bobby Pierce then, but white flag, Bob, one to go for T-Mac. How close will it be at the line? Hudson O'Neill is closing in. 1.2 seconds now with one to go. Hudson O'Neill is gonna run out of time in this one. Shane Clanton in the 25. A slower car in front of Tim McCready. Hold on, partner. It's McCready time again in the Cowboy Classic. Tim McCready scores his second victory of the season in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Up on the front row to get this one underway. The drone is up in the air, been providing some great shots for us here as Lucas Gibbs and Randy Timms will see the orange cone first on Show Me 100 weekend. It's time for the Modifieds to show out in this 20 lap A main. Gibbs all the way up the racetrack and like a rocket, here comes Randy Timms. That 91X Duval electric hot rod slides up to try to cut the forward progress off the 51. The 51 will give him a little kiss, and that means Lucas Gibbs will go to the bottom of the racetrack and try to take the top spot away from Tim's. An exciting first lap here. You see the dust and dirt flying as we get going here. 
in our USRA modified main event. And Corey, I think what's going to make this race so entertaining now is they came out the first time for their heats, had no clue what the track was going to be like. There hasn't been a lot of racing between then and now. So they've gone in, they've made the adjustments, and it's probably about as spot on as it can get as far as these cars handling on this type of surface right now. As a great battle up front now, side by side, Tim's will grab the top spot away. Battle now for fourth, fifth, and Two Duval electric entries. The 91 of Tim's and the 91 of Duval line up nose to tail. They've got the inside line as Gibbs gets us going back under green flag racing here. The 151 of Gibbs up the track now. That will open the door and Tim's like a rocket again will come racing through. They traded spots back and forth on the opening two laps. Can Big Daddy come with them now as Duvall tries to pull up alongside the 51, but Gibbs will hold on to second place. Just a three-tenths of a second difference between he and your race leader as Tim's rockets down the back stretch now. The 91X to the bottom of the racetrack you see the racing behind your leader Gibbs up around the cushion loses a little bit of momentum and allows Duvall to race right back up on the back of that car well just a few weeks ago Hendrick Motorsports had a one two three four finish how about a Duvall Motorsports finish of one two with the only two cars on him right now one car sandwiched in between that two car team and that is Lucas Gibbs riding in second now, heat from the backside of Joe Duvall as Ryan Middall gets into the picture, running in fourth. And Randy Timms now has stretched his lead out to .6 seconds over Lucas Gibbs. Gibbs giving it all that it's got right now, but still almost a second behind your race leader. Meanwhile, the young gun from Urbana, Dylan McCowan, has his eight right up in the middle of everything, currently scored in the fifth place position, trying to keep the principal, Jason Persley, behind him in that Napa Auto Parts ride. The 38C always right around the bottom of the racetrack, and they continue to give chase. Button Buck with a good run here, mid-off in the top ten in points. As a matter of fact, in the Cedar Creek Beef Jerky USRA points here at Lucas Oil Speedway. Nine of the top ten drivers making laps here tonight. As you see your race leader again, Randy Timms, the pilot of the 91X. And it's so far, Shane, Gibbs, once Timms has gotten out in front of him, it's taken a caution for him to be able to get much closer. He was last here to Lucas Oil Speedway two years ago, running a late model, finished 21st. Well, right now he's got the other 91 behind him along with the 151 of Lucas Gibbs. But Tim's has been riding it like it's on a rail so far. Big Daddy will go up to the top of turn number two and not find a lot of run out there, but Dylan McCowan does as the eight trying to sneak in between a couple of cars. Gibbs to the bottom of the racetrack as we are halfway through our 20-lap A main for the Cedar Creek Beef Jerky USRA Modifieds. A nose now under your race leader as Gibbs all over the backside of the 91X of Tim's. And Gibbs really hasn't budged much off of that low line. And you can tell Tim's using his rear view mirror is, he can hear the number 51 is now a flat tire on the hot shoe that ran so well in the B feature just to make his way into the A main as Cody Schneep, the Comet, has a flat left rear. And instead of taking the hard B at home now, not quite ready to bring the baby to the racetrack yet but would love to bring that 88 into victory lane. He's got a few cars to try and get around. He's in the middle of a three wide bunch as they work their way off of turn number four. And we go back to green flag racing. Tim's trying to take the 91X all the way home here. The 91 of Joe Duvall around the top side. Trouble for Lucas Gibbs as he slowed off of turn number four and the 91 team, the Duvall Electric pair now running one two for the first time tonight and Gibbs Shane gives up a ton of real estate to the Duval electric cars but we'll try to battle back around the bottom of the racetrack as you see the pair of 91s leading us off of turn number four with seven more laps to go yeah that was not a power move by any stretch by Joe Duval to grab second just an error by Lucas Gibbs 
He has dropped back to third now, and now Middaw and Dylan McCowan battling side by side. That's fourth and fifth in a huge wad of cars as Timms and Duvall still stay lined up. And Randy Timms still has the horsepower, does not hardly ever get behind the wheel, only a handful of races each year. And he has knocked the rust off just like riding a bike. Get back, gets back out and leads the way. Whatever happened to you? Remember when we when the team racing became a big deal in NASCAR? We started talking about team orders. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Joe's been on a roll, man. Joe he's got second right now, Big Daddy. He just won at the Rev the other weekend, a thirty-two hundred dollar payday. But right now, you almost get the sensation that he was trying to hold Gibbs up there. But the one fifty-one of Lucas Gibbs gets around him with four laps and change to go uh, here. He is going to try and get up to the front. Okay, I heard your team order comment. I think you were trying to say that Joe Duvall needed to grab the lead. You don't think Joe was just actually trying to hold Gibbs up, do you? Eh, Is that you what you were know. trying to say there? I don't know. You can never you can never tell. He's driving a good race, so is Gibbs, but nobody's really been better than the 91X. Tim's has been good ever since the drop of the green flag, and now he's just got two more laps to try and keep the... It was all on his own error. His little bobble gave up that spot. Since then, he has been flying back up through the field. Can he fly all the way to the front with only three green flag laps left? Gibbs in second. Tim's in first with Big Daddy Joe Duvall on the other side of the 51. So that pair of 91s still trying to hold on to two of the three podium finishes as Tim's will work his way through the middle of three and four, slide up and try to stop the forward progress of Gibbs. Gibbs battling back to the bottom of the racetrack now. The 51 a little slow off the bottom of turn number two. And Tim's takes her all the way down the back stretch and brings them around one more time. Tim's and Duvall around the bottom of the track and Gibbs gets a good run off of four now and will take it to the inside. He gets on the binders, keeps it at the bottom of the racetrack now, trying to hold on. He slid around the 91X of Tim's. Lucas Gibbs keeps the car up around the top in turns three and four, flying off the turn number four. He won't have enough. It's <laughs> Tim's back to the top of the track and he takes it away. Gibbs had him momentarily and then Randy Tim's comes all the way back to take